Oh, let's wave them around. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Tonight I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Job. I'm reading out of the Living Bible tonight. I like, I like, I don't like the Living Bible in a lot. They cut out a lot of words. Uh, they just, they just um, uh, translate um, ideas and paraphrase. It's really not a translation. But something like the Old Testament, many times, it's real good because it makes it clear. Could I have an amen? Just before, um, just after Esther and just before Psalms. Now, this will read a little different than your Bible, but it's good to have your Bible open there. There lived in the land of us a man named Job. I'm going to read a long time, so y'all just uh, kind of stay with me here. Chapter 1, verse 1. Got it? There lived in the land of us a man named Job, a good man. Everybody say a good man. Who feared God. Say he feared God. He stayed away from evil. Say he stayed away from evil. That's pretty good, isn't it? He had a large family of seven sons and three daughters and was immensely wealthy. For he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and employed many servants. He was, in fact, the richest cattleman in that entire area. Every year when each of Job's son had a birthday, he invited his brothers and sisters to his house for a celebration. On these occasions, they would eat and drink with great merriment. When these birthday parties ended, and sometimes they lasted several days, Job would summon the, his children to him and sanctify them, getting them up early in the morning and offering a burnt offering for each one of them. For Job said, Perhaps my son have sinned and turned away from God in their hearts. This was Job's re regular practice. It's good to have such a watch care over your family. Could I have a better amen? I'm talking about you need to really watch over your family. I still watch over my family. I bug them to death, calling them, taking care of them, but don't hear from them for a while. I call and say, what are you doing? Ignoring me. One day the angels, it says the sons of God where you are in that translation, but one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan, the accuser, came with them. Evidently, he had access to heaven. Where have you come? Where did you come from? The Lord asked Satan. He, and Satan replied, from patrolling the earth. See, he, the, uh, the devil walks up and down throughout all the earth. He patrols this earth with all of his demon forces. Of course, they are in the air also. Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He's the finest man in all the earth, a good man who fears God, who will have nothing to do with evil. Why shouldn't he? When you pay him so well, Satan scoffed, you've always protected him and his home and his property from all harm. You've prospered everything he does. Look how rich he is. No wonder he worships you. But just take away his wealth and you'll, he'll, you'll see he'll curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, you may do anything you like with his wealth, but don't harm him physically. So Satan went away. Sure enough, not long afterwards, when Job's sons and daughters were dining in the oldest brother's house, tragedy struck. A messenger rushed to Job's house with the news. Your oxen were plying with the donkeys feeding with them. When the Sabaeans raided us, drove away the animals and killed all the farmhands except me, and I'm only the only one left. While his messenger was still speaking, another ride with more bad news. The fire of God from, has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep with all the herdsmen, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Before this man finished, uh, still another messenger rushed in. Three bands of Chaldeans have driven off all your camels and killed your servants, and I alone have escaped to tell you. 
as he was still speaking, another arrived and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting in their oldest brother's house, when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and engulfed the house, so that the roof fell in on them. They're all dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job stood up and tore his robe in grief, fell down upon the ground before God. I came naked from my mother's womb, and I shall take nothing when I have nothing when I die. The Lord gave, and the Lord take, took away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or revile God. Now the angels came again to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan was with them. Where have you come from, Satan? The Lord asked Satan. From patrolling the earth, Satan replied. Well, have you noticed my servant Job? The Lord asked. He's the finest man in all the earth, a good man who fears God and turns away from all evil. And he has kept his faith in me despite the fact that you persuaded me to let you harm him without any cause. Skin for skin, Satan replied. Man will give anything to save his life. Touch his body with sickness, and he'll curse you to your face. Do with him as you please, the Lord replied. Only spare his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with a terrible case of boils from head to foot. Then Job took a broken piece of pottery to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, Are you still trying to be godly when God has done all this to you? Curse him and die. But he replied, You talk like a heathen woman. What? Shall we receive only pleasant things at the hand of God and never anything unpleasant? So in all this, he said, Nothing wrong. When three of Job's friends came, and then they start about the friends coming. I'll stop there. But isn't that an unusual story? Can I have an amen? amen? Now I want to talk about this tonight. Because you see, Job is the oldest book in the Bible. It was written before Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, which is called the Pentateuch, or the Law. And, and in this, God gives His first revelation to the human race. Now sometimes we can get so taken up with something that questions in our mind, we forget the main message God wants us to see. Could I have an amen? Now, number one, God is showing us here that there are two forces in the earth, God's goodness and Satan's badness. He pulls back the curtain of human existence to show what happens behind, behind the veil. Now, none of us have ever had anything like that happen. We've never at least I haven't, never had God pull back the curtain to show what's really happening out there. But from the oldest book in the Bible, he is saying to the human race, I am not the author of sickness and disease. It is the destroyer called Satan that gives you your trouble. Got to have an amen. So we see here that Job, that, that, that Job had a lot of trouble and having a lot of trouble doesn't mean that you're not living right. First thing that anybody says, if somebody struck down with some strange disease, wonder what they did. Well, Job was an upright man. He was a good man. He hated evil. He watched after his children. And I want you to notice the hedge. We know we've all talked about the hedge around Job, and uh, it reads a little different in uh, the King James, but essentially it's the same. Satan scoffed and said, no wonder he serves you. You protected him. See, God has a protection for you. Say, God has a protection for me. And you have protected his home. Say, my home is protected by God. And his property. Say, my property is protected by God. And he prospers everything he does. Say, he prospers everything I do. Now notice it says, look how rich he is. Notice that God put a hedge around him to protect him, his children, his wife, his family, his home, his property, and prospered everything he did and made him rich. Now that's the oldest book in the Bible. Don't tell me God wants you in poverty. There is a hedge for us to be behind. 
the arm of God's uh, arm of God's protection. Actually, the word you are peculiar people. Did you know in the Greek that means uh, uh, peculiar means that you are surrounded by God's goodness. That's the peculiar thing about us. Not that we look weird or smell weird are peculiar in mental activity. We're peculiar in that God has surrounded us with His protection and His goodness. We got to be sure the heads doesn't get out. God's plan is for us to be blessed like Job. Everybody say, I want God's blessings. Now notice that there is an enemy that Job has. It says, be sober, be vigilant for your enemy, the devil. Walks about. He's still patrolling the earth. Can't afford a car. Walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He cannot devour everybody. He's got to seek and seek and seek and find somebody that doesn't go to Lakewood Church. Or some other good church. Somebody that doesn't know divine revelation of redemption. I tell you, ignorance is his playground. Satan went throughout all the earth seeking whom he could devour. And oh, how he hated Job. And he hates you. He hates you. Yes, he does. He's not going to treat you Fairly, he's going to do everything he can. And if he can bluff you and keep you in ignorance and trample on you, he'll do it till the end of your days. Satan said, no wonder he serves you. Look, you protect all, protect him and all of his home and his property and you've made him rich. Who wouldn't serve God? He said, you just let me touch his wealth. And he'll curse you to your face. You know, the devil sometimes <clears throat> accuses you like that. You know how God talks about you? Have you seen my servant? And he calls your name. When I say three, everybody say your first name that you go by. One, two, three, John. We'll do it again. Say it again. One, two, three, John. He says, have you seen my servant, Bob? Have you seen my servant, Dwayne? Now, that's not fanciful thinking. God does that. That there's none like him in all of Houston. And the devil said, sure, look what you've done. Let them find out about Lakewood Church. Going over there, listen to Brother Osteen preaching all the time. Learned about prosperity, learned about healing, learned about miracles and all of that. But you just allow a little adversity in their life and let a little darkness come along and you will see, they'll get out of the church, they'll run, they'll curse you, they'll turn back to the world. Say, the devil is a liar. Devil is a liar. Say, no way, Jose. Did you hear about that little Mexican that came to the United States just brand new here? That doesn't have anything to do with my sermon. And he wanted to go to a ball game, couldn't get in, so there's a tall flagpole out there. And he climbed up on that flagpole, right up next to the flag, way up there in the air. And he got home, he said, oh, I was treated so good. He said, how do you know? He said, everybody stood up and said, Jose, can you see? I didn't have anything to do with my sermon. But listen, you, you, some of you, I see people out here that are going through battles. Husbands. Wives. We have more than one husband in here going through great trials in their home. More than one. We have many of you who are facing trials. See... God does. Now, now God doesn't sin and say, well, I believe I'm going to put sickness on you. I believe I'm going to take away. No, God allows in life tests and trials. Now, that, that shouldn't upset your theology. 
We are on enemy territory, and through tests and trials, we become strong. Only the muscle you use becomes strong. Don't use it, you'll lose it. And we have, there are permitted trials. That doesn't mean it's God's will. You can fight out of it. You shouldn't say, well, now maybe God wants me to stay in this for a long time. No, no, we're just on the enemy territory and there are things that are allowed in life. Nobody is going to get to heaven on smooth sailing. This is the end of side one. Please turn your cassette over at this time. But the devil tries by the trials that you go through. Now listen to me. The, the very thing you're going through right now, he's saying, you just watch. They'll curse you to your face. They'll get out of church. They'll lose their faith. They'll get out there and not serve you anymore. I want you to say it again. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. There are pressures. He said, I'm sure. God has said, have you seen my servant, Dodie? Yes. But look how good you treated Dodie. Gave her the best looking handsome man in the world. <laughs> by faith, clap by faith. Oh yes, you just given her everything. Good children and a good home and a good church and all of that. Oh, but you wait. She'll just turn against you. No, she didn't turn against you. She just stood up. And I'll tell you, she's stronger today after the healing of that cancer. Amen. Amen. So you see, the trial that you go through is Satan trying to get you to desert God and your faith. But God's smiling and say, they'll never do it. They'll never do it. They'll never do it. I want you to notice that before Satan got a hold of Job, Job was wealthy, healthy, and happy, and contented. And when the devil got through with him, he was poor, and sick, and ready to die, and he lost everything. That shows you who the destroyer is. Now don't get all uh, out, of, out of whack over some little technicality in this book. Just take the broad idea of what God wanted to tell the human race. The killer, the destroyer, the liar, the thief, the one that caused the, causes the bad is clearly set out by, as Satan. Now I know most of you know that, but you need to realize it anew. But that's always, oh, but God allowed him. No, don't get hung up on that. Somebody said, why did God let me have that wreck? Well, you know, God lets everything go. go. He, he let somebody rob a bank today. He let several people got sh get shot today. He let, he let robberies go. Uh, God is not going to patrol everybody's life and make you do something. We're in a world of evil. Don't, don't get hung up on some negative thing. Think of it like this. Thank God God put a limit on Satan. See, that's the positive thing. Don't get in a, in a theological argument about, well, maybe God sent this on me and he's, no, 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 the enemy wants to kill you. But God said you can go this far and no more. There is no temptation or trial or test come to you, but such is his common demand. And God is faithful who will not allow you to be tested and tempted above what you're able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Well, go ahead and rejoice. God carefully watches every woman, man, child, individual here. He knows your limits. And he will not allow. He will not permit Satan to take you beyond what you can bear. I mean, he's carefully watching. He just won't allow it. He just will not let, 
the enemy do that to you. Now in the midst of it all, you'll learn to fight. All the trouble and all the sorrow came from Satan and God tempered whatever he did. Notice it says you can take everything he's got, but don't touch his body. You touch his body, but don't kill him. God's in charge. And God loves you, and Jesus is your shepherd, and he calls you by name. He knows how many hairs are on the top of your head. He knows everything about you, and he loves you dearly, and he's shepherding you and watching you throughout all of life. And he's going to take care of you. And you notice that when God just pulled back a little bit, it says Satan struck Job with sore boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. God didn't give him the boils. The devil did. So settle it in your mind. You know where sickness comes from. I know most of you know that. But you see, this underlines it in the first book, in the oldest book of the Bible. God clearly states where sickness comes from. It comes from the enemy. And it were, if it were not for the goodness of God, he would consume all of us. But thank God we have been delivered from the power of darkness. And we've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. And we have authority to chase the devil off. Now I want you to notice... One other thing here, how good men and bad and good women can have bad theology. You can be real good, honest before God and be totally off theologically on your thinking about God. Job said, the Lord gave and the Lord took away. The Lord gave, but God didn't take away. The devil took away. See, we know that because we saw more than what Job saw. Are y'all out there? Yeah. The Lord gave and the Lord took away. If you read the book of Job, just what I read you tonight, if God is the one that gave him all his blessings. It was the devil who took him away. And then notice when his wife said something to him, he said, shall we receive good at the hand of the Lord and not evil? How bad his theology is. We know where it came from. We see more than Job saw. God never gave the evil. The devil gave the evil. Then I want you to notice something else that Job overcame in spite of a mate that tried to get him to curse God. You ought to thank God for a good mate. But I want to say, if you've got one that blasphemes God, that's no excuse for you to fail God. She said, do you still hold on to your integrity? Why don't you just curse God and die? I said, oh, if my husband just served God with me, I could make it. No, you can make it without him. Oh, if my wife would just do this. Oh, you can make it without him. Job's wife said, curse God and die. Job said, you talk like a heathen. I'm going to serve God. Amen. Glory to God. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. You gotta make up your mind. I got a made up mind, haven't you? Say, I got a made up mind. I can make it. If I have to make it alone, I'll make it. I'm not gonna go to hell for anybody. I'm gonna go to heaven. If everybody else goes to hell, I'm not going to hell. See, quit blaming your situation. See, Job made it without his wife. So did uh, Lot. She turned to a pillar of salt. But you can make it when your family 
says, curse God and die. If God is good, why are you going through this? If God is good, why are you going through this? If he's a good God, why has this happened to you? You just keep on singing. Just keep on singing. Don't let anybody turn you away from God. You've seen too much and heard too much and felt too much and know too much. No turning back. Hallelujah. No turning back. Amen. Glory. Then I want you to notice, and I want to hurry here because I promised to get you out early. I want you to notice now how the devil works. When all this destruction started, and they began to report in, in verse uh, 14, 4, it says, uh, uh, 14 I guess, a messenger rushed up to Job's house for the news. Your, your, your oxen were plowing, but the dog is feeding them. And, and the Sabaeans read it. See, the devil stirs up Sabaeans to destroy. He'll use people to destroy. No, the devil doesn't have anybody. He'll get in somebody. So all that opposition around you among people may be the devil's scheme to try to defeat you. Twice he used people. And then uh, here's some more false theology. Verse uh, 16, while this messenger was still speaking, another ride uh, with more bad news, the fire of God. It's not the fire of God. The fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the herdsmen. Then in the 17th verse, he used his men again, the Chaldeans, he stirred them up. And then notice in verse 16, all the children were in that house and a mighty wind swept through the desert and blew the house down. So he uses the forces of nature. And he uses people. We shouldn't stand up and just face every storm and say, well, it's God. God sent this storm, this tornado. No, God never sent that awful tornado that hit Bangladesh. You'd have to be out of your mind to think God sent that. You say, well, why, why doesn't that all happen here? Well, lots of it does happen here. But I'll tell you, the forces of God in this nation holds back the forces of evil more than you realize. There they have no teaching like this. They have no great body of believers to stand up and, and, and rebuke the powers of darkness. And he just has a heyday with them. He uses the wind. He uses the lightning. He uses the storm. He uses people. So you've got to be alert. Be sober. Be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He is the troublemaker. God is the trouble fixer. Amen. And there he is, sick and ready to die with sore boys. Now, now you, you just think about The devil had his one opportunity to strike him. He could have given him arthritis. That wouldn't have hurt him much. He could have given him something else. But you see, what is more painful than one great big boil? Some of you never had a boil. How many of you had a boil? Some of you have. What if you had them all over your head, 15 or 20 coming down your neck, 25 or 30 here, 25 or 30 down each arm, about 50 around here, and all the way down uh, to the bottom of it. See, the devil is a mean devil. He wants you to suffer. Well, you say, what can I do? Rise up against it. In life, we'll all have our, our opportunities for, for, you know, for battles. Trials come to everybody. Don't get the idea, well, God sent this trial. No, God wants us to learn to exercise our our authority in Jesus. That's the reason he doesn't give little baby Christians very many trials. Isn't that right, Marion? 
He'll give, he'll give, he'll, he'll keep a little baby Christian. You notice when you first got saved, first got the baptism in the Holy Ghost, everything you asked for, you got. And then suddenly, seems like you're backslidden. No, you're just growing up. See, God will allow you to get in these trials so you can exercise the name of Jesus and bring glory to the Father. Every time you put the devil on the run with the name of Jesus, the Father's glorified. My son didn't die in vain. If you got sickness raging in your body, you resist it. And you, you, you recognize where it comes from. Now somebody said, well, I'm God's poor old Job. Well, if you're God's Job, this didn't last but about uh, a few months there. And God not only healed him, he gave him twice as much money as he had and another family. So if you're God's Job, you ought to end up pretty good. Twice as much. And if you've gone through trials and you've, you've lost a lot and, and you've suffered a lot, remember Job went through trials and he suffered a lot and lost a lot, but he didn't lose his faith. So stand strong. You got a good God. He's good enough to show you where your trouble comes from. Listen, He has put a hedge about you and all that belongs to you. Now you can break that hedge down by disobedience, unforgiveness, going out there and flirting with the world and all of that. You just break your hedge down. But I want to walk in the center of God's will. And when trials come, that's your opportunity. Y'all you really ought to smile at a trial. Because that's your opportunity to use your spiritual muscles. When I first learned about authority, I just went looking for the devil. Looking for somebody full of the devil so I could exercise my authority. God protects little baby Christians. But as you get up a little bit, he'll, uh, he'll allow you to go through some of these trials. He'll let you face the enemy. See, Jesus faced the enemy. The, devil said, the Bible says the devil left him for a season. Wasn't just that one temptation. He said to his disciples, you've been with me in all of my temptations. So it, there were many times that, that Jesus had to face forces. Like when he sweat drops of blood in the garden. And, uh, and he, he came out victorious. And J Peter said, don't, th don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trials that try you as though some strange thing had happened? No. The trial of your faith is much more precious to God than that of gold. So smile when you get in trouble. And say, this is my opportunity. Glory to God. I'll stop this storm. I'll stop the force of darkness. I'll stop the devil and demons. I'm going to be victorious. And I'll, I may lose a battle or two, but I'll never lose the war. Amen. Amen. Rejoice. 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 Keep the bolo boko shaka mahandaya. See, Jesus said to Peter... Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired you that he might sift you as wheat. And sometimes we will be allowed to go into something. But I'm telling you, Peter got by the fire, then he got in the fire, but then he got on fire. So you may get by the fire and you may get in the fire, but you're coming out of the fire and you're going to be on fire for Jesus. And Satan does desire uh, to, to press some of you out of measure. But I'm telling you, he's never going to win. Never going to win. Say, never, 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 never. Lift your hands now and praise God for the revelation you got tonight. Thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Praise him a little while. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Father, that you're a good God, that you temper all trials and temptations that you watch over us faithfully, Jesus, as our shepherd. We praise you and thank you, Lord, 
that no trial or temptation will be more than we can bear. But you will, with the temptation and trial, make a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer.